In this video, I will show you how to input triplets in FamiTracker. My name is Matthew Ivick, and I've used this technique to create all sorts of triplets, tuplets, and interesting polyrhythms. This video is divided into three sections. Firstly, I'll show you how to input triplets in a blank FamiTracker module. Secondly, I'll explain why it works the way it does. And lastly, if you stick with me to the end of this video, I'll show you how you can input any irrational rhythm into FamiTracker. This is especially powerful if you want to incorporate interesting and creative rhythms in your music. Before we begin, I wanted to mention two things. First, make sure an instrument is available. If no instrument has been added, click Add Instrument. A 2A03 instrument called 00 New Instrument will appear. And second, if the last statement made no sense to you and you are completely new to FamiTracker, I recommend you first check out my video, How to Make 8 Bit Music with FamiTracker. This video will help clarify both the terminology I use and basic tracking concepts. In this example, I will input triplet eighth notes in a blank FamiTracker module. First, input the notes of the triplet you'd like on rows 00, 01, and 02. As an example, I will use the notes C, E, and G. Next, move to the effects column for row 01 and program the note delay effect G with a value of 2. Lastly, move to row 02 and program the delay note effect with a value of 4. To hear the result, press the play button or F5. To stop, press the stop button or F8. In this section, I will explain how the previous triplet example worked. By default, the pattern window displays even subdivisions of the beat in 4 4 time. A strong yellow highlight is used to mark the downbeat, while a weak yellow highlight marks beats 2, 3, and 4. The four rows between each beat can be thought of as 16th notes. A triplet, however, divides the beat into three equal parts. While we can only input notes on even subdivisions of the beat, this does not mean that they must be triggered or played when the row is first executed. This is why we use the note delay effect, or the G effect, programmed in the effects column. Using the delay note effect, we can activate a note on any given tick of a row. A tick is the smallest division of time executed in a module. The amount of ticks in each row is equal to the module speed defined in the song settings. By default, the blank module is set to speed 6, meaning each row has 6 ticks. Returning to our example, if we want to divide the beat into three equal parts, we must give each note an equal amount of ticks. There are four rows per beat. Each row is made up of six ticks. Six ticks times four rows is 24 ticks. 24 divided into three equal parts gives us eight ticks. This means in order to divide the beat into three equal parts, each note must occur every eight ticks. Let's dissect our programmed module row by row to understand how the delay note effect helps us accomplish this. Remember, each note must sound every eight ticks. On row 00, the note C plays for six ticks. On row 01, the note C is still sounding because the note E is delayed by two ticks. Six ticks from the previous row plus the two ticks from this row equals eight ticks. C has been sounding for eight ticks. This means our first subdivision of the triplet is complete. The next note, E, begins on tick three of row 01. This row is four ticks remaining. Each subdivision gets 8 ticks, so we need 4 more ticks from row 02 to have E sound for 8. This is why the delay note effect G04 is used. 4 ticks from row 01 plus 4 ticks from row 02 equals 8 ticks. E has been sounding for 8 ticks. Our second subdivision of the triplet is complete. The last note, G, begins sounding on tick 5 of row 02. It sounds for the remaining 2 ticks and for the entirety of row 03, which consists of 6 ticks. 2 plus 6 equals 8. G has been sounding for 8 ticks. This means our last subdivision of the triplet is complete. In this section, I will show a method to figure out any irrational rhythm and how to notate it within FamiTracker. First, find the total amount of ticks the rhythm will occur over. This can be done by multiplying the module speed by the amount of rows the rational rhythm occurs over. For our previous example, we multiplied the default speed of 6 by 4 rows. Second, find where the notes should be placed in terms of ticks. You can do this by dividing the total amount of ticks by the type of tuplet. In the case of a triplet, we would divide by 3. In the case of a quintuplet, we would divide by 5, and so on. Lastly, input and delay the notes accordingly. Okay, let's do another example. This time, let's program eighth note quintuplets or five eighth notes in the time of four. First, multiply the module speed 
by the amount of rows the rhythm takes place over. This will tell us how many ticks we have to work with. The speed is six, and the tuplet takes place over eight rows. Remember, we defined every other row as an eighth note. Six times eight is 48. Next, divide this number by the irregular divisor, or in this case, five for quintuplet. So when we do this division, 48 divided by 5, we get 9.6. Initially, this seems like trouble, since with the delay effect, we can only program in whole numbers, no fractions allowed. Mm -hmm. So a solution here is to round up. In the case of 9.6, we're going to round up to 10. While the spacing may not be perfect, it works for most situations. If we plan on writing music with a lot of quintuplets and an exact feel is required, we might want to consider changing the speed of the piece to 5. This will guarantee that quintuplets will be spaced perfectly. To recap this method, first, find the total amount of ticks the rhythm will occur over. You can find this by multiplying the speed by the number of rows in the rhythm. Second, divide the total number of available ticks by the type of tuplet. Lastly, input and delay the notes accordingly. I'd also like to mention one caveat to this method. If the rational rhythm exceeds the amount of displayed rows, it cannot, in most cases, be programmed in. For example, 11 16th notes in the time of 8 cannot be programmed at speed 6 because only 8 rows are displayed. However, in some situations, such as 5 16th notes in the time of 4, this can be displayed by programming the first note before the downbeat and delaying the preceding notes accordingly. This is not always possible and depends on the musical context. Let's say you still really want to incorporate that 11 16th note tuplet at speed 6. There is a way to do this by using instruments. We still need to know at what interval in ticks the rhythm occurs at, so let's follow the first two steps of the previous method. First, find the total amount of ticks. We know we're using speed 6, and we know the rhythm will occur over 8 16th notes, or 8 rows. 6 times 8 is 48. Next, divide 48 by the tuplet grouping, which is 11 in this case. The answer is 4.36363636. So we're going to round to the nearest whole number, which in this case is 4. A note would need to be input every 4 ticks, which isn't possible with only 8 rows. It is, however, possible with this one simple trick. Let's create a new instrument and call it 118 tuplet. Now, Take the arpeggio box and input groups of four notes 11 times. I will use a chromatic scale for this example. Lastly, program the starting note in the pattern window. Hit play and you can hear a fairly convincing 11 16th note tuplet in the time of eight. This works because each value in the text field is equivalent to a single tick. In general, this trick can be used instead of the delay note effect method. It's especially useful if you're using the same figure, like the C arpeggio, repeatedly. The downside to this method is that the figure's intervals are absolute. In other words, a new instrument must be created each time you wish to change the intervallic content of the figure. The best solution i found is to use a mix of both methods. Use the delay method for simple tuplets, and the instrument method for repeated figures and tuplets that are too big to fit in the pattern window. I should also note, there are Fermi Tracker hacks, which let you do a lot more with arpeggios, effects, and instruments. We can also modulate to other speeds and meters to solve some of these tuplet issues. However, these subjects are way beyond the scope of this video. I do plan to put out videos on all these subjects, so feel free to subscribe and you'll be notified when they're out. Lastly, while these solutions are mathematically correct, I do not suggest using them solely. Ultimately, when working with irrational rhythms, I recommend using a combination of your own ear and the work's musical nature as your guide. And speaking of guides, I have an entire book on Famitracker called Famitracker Fundamentals. I cover advanced topics like irrational rhythms, creating intricate instruments, and also I discuss composition strategies for composing music specifically in Famitracker. So check that out if you're interested. Until next time, thanks for watching.